Yarswood is a main detention centre for women. There's other detention centres, sometimes women are held elsewhere, but the longer term is always in Yarswood. And um, there has been, the reason that Yarswood is so scandalised is because so many of the women have been strong about speaking out about the sexual abuse, about abuse from guards, the um, general like conditions. Um, there's always people there, there's a high prevalence of people who have been victims of abuse in their past, you know, in their childhood or growing up or being trafficked or all sorts of things. That's part of why they're in a dysfunctional, you know, position, an unstable immigration status. You know, some got out of violent relationships, you know, including with British partners, but that meant that their uh, immigration status is then thrown in the air as a result of them leaving an abusive relationship, things like that. But that means that they're very strong in so many ways because they've made this stand. Um, the state holding them in those conditions is disorienting and, you know, really um, re-traumatizing and a betrayal from a state that a lot of people felt believed in those kind of human rights, you know, protected those kind of human rights. It's a betrayal to discover that when you actually come out and speak the truth about abuse, you know, and, and violence, sexual violence and all the rest, that you can actually find yourself locked up, you know, not for a crime, but just locked up for administrative reasons with the potential of being deported and see other people in the same condition being deported. Because if you're in a detention center, you're surrounded by people in high anxiety conditions as well. So all of that is traumatizing and undermining. But at the same time, like, I just want to draw attention to the fact that they are also very strong women who are fighting. It requires to change the conditions. It's the, the situation that people are put in makes them vulnerable. But actually, they're, you know, very inspiring, you know, tough women who we need here because you know, we need to see a fight for women's rights and fighting sexism. And so there's different units. So normally people can move around during the day between the units, the library or whatever, like the IT room, because they are expected at the same time to be fighting their case whilst they're in there. Um, but they locked down the whole center inside this time. So um, if the women who were in the unit that faced the outside could see us but the women in the other unit were prevented because the corridors were locked down so they weren't able to join so we had like less women in the sense of at the windows where they could see us but they were waving signs they were participating you know shouting back messages speaking over the phone and the women in the other uh, unit that couldn't see us talked to us over the phone and they told us about what was happening and that they were being held back, that they were being prevented, you know, from coming. They'd look forward to the demonstration because it's just like you get to just look out of the window and see all these people. You know, some of them your friends, some of them used to be inside with you, and then other complete strangers who have made the effort and come down from around the country. So I think that when they lock that down, that center, it's to try to, it, it's the management trying to prevent people having that kind of a uplift. It is literally like, we're trying to censor what you see. We're preventing you from being able to see the support you've got, not for your protection, just because we don't want you to feel that you have that support or participate in it. It was an attempt by management to restrict the demonstration, to restrict the um, sense of, you know, to have that freedom to protest, to have a voice. So it was censorship on their part, um, but it's not going to stop us, and it didn't stop us. Oh, yeah, I mean, so yeah, we're next going to go back to Yarswood for a demonstration on the 3rd of December, and so we're going to expect that to be huge because we, a lot of young people want to come, a lot more students will be back at University College planning to come, and, and it will hopefully be the biggest demonstration at Yarswood to date. Okay, and how will people find out about their demonstration? Where should they go? Yeah, they can, if they go to MFJ on Facebook, Movement for Justice on Facebook, or on Twitter, it's at follow MFJ. They'll find information, we'll book coaches from around the country. You know, they'll get all the logistics. Wish 
I knew how it would feel to be free. I wish I could break all chains still binding me. Yeah. Wish I could say all the things that I can say when I'm relaxed. Starting anew